It's Top Gun week. So starting three days from now is the world premiere of the second Top Gun movie. Now 30 years after the original, this one called Top Gun Maverick. On today's show, I'm going to be breaking down the new movie using the trailer and also some of the release material that the producers released early to show you, you know, how to think about the movie, what's real and what's otherwise. And I will tell you, spoiler, spoiler alert, there's a lot more real life action in this movie and real airplane action than there was in the first movie. So I'm gonna break down the movie. We're gonna go through the trailer together. You're gonna to know so much more than all of your friends. And you know what we're gonna to do today too? We're gonna to give learn some business lessons along the way. It's good to be back. <laughs> Ed Talks Live is next. All right, hey, what's up, party people? My name's Ed Rush, five-time number one best-selling author, your host for the most positive place on the planet for insanely implementable ideas. Listen, it's been a while since we did a show, uh, but we're back. What is this, episode 127, 128? By the way, be sure to jump into chat, whatever platform you're streaming on. Uh, if you're on LinkedIn, that's on the right-hand side where quite a few of you are right now. If you're on YouTube, that's on the right-hand side. If you're on Twitter, that's someplace in the stream someplace. And I want to welcome our friends over at Rumble. Uh, if you're on Rumble, definitely say hello in chat. Uh, say hello, tell us who you are, where you're from, uh, and what you do. My question for you today is who feels the need for speed? I actually went back to a website uh, recently and just looked at all of the different uh, quotes from Top Gun. Oh my goodness, there's like 30 quotes that if I said those right now, you would recognize those. Uh, in a moment, we're going to watch the trailer from the new Top Gun movie. By the way, I've got my tickets, but I got 10 tickets. <laughs> I bought 10 tickets. Uh, so I have a family of six, right? But the three-year-old's not coming, so that's five of us. Two of the grandparents, then another one of the grandparents, then two of my friends, uh, one of my daughter's friends. It was like a lot of people. So <laughs> we're going to we're gonna hang out. What's up, Roy Red? Good to see you. By the way, for those of you who haven't jumped into chat, you better go do that because I'm going to be taking your questions today. Good to see you back, Roy, my man. What's up there, Resetology? That's Jim House. Jim's on Jim's on vacation. He's mentioned, talking about my shirt, the Because I Was Inverted shirt. Remember that quote from the very first Top Gun movie? How did you get that picture? Because I was inverted. Oh, no, look at this. John Haley, blue jeans and a white t-shirt with Ray-Bans on Sunday with Summer Joy. What's up, my man? Gina says, greetings from London. Always glad to see you in action. Uh, I know. I invited this, this behind the scenes. I invited Jim House to come as my guest to the movie. But instead, he's fishing. Uh, John Haley says, when you're going Mach 5 with your hair on fire, best quote of the movie. Take my breath away. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the show. Why don't, we do, why don't we do this? Why don't we get right to it? Uh, I'm going to play the trailer for the new movie, and then we're going to go step by step. I'm going to play the whole thing straight through, uh, and then we're going to go step by step through it, and I'm going to show you what's real, what's not real, and then I'm going to talk to you about how they made the movie. By the way, for those of you who are just joining us, um, we're going to break down the new Top Gun movie. Tomorrow, by the way, I'm going to break down the old Top Gun movie. I'm going to go through some of the scenes in that movie uh, and show you uh, what was real and was, what wasn't real. I, I'm probably a fighter pilot, by the way, because of that movie. Uh, and then, um, uh, and I've got some special stuff for you planned today as well. And I'm going to be taking your questions, so make sure that you jump into chat, tell us who you are, where you're from, uh, and what you do. Yeah, you're all talking to each other now. I love it. Uh, what's up, Joe? Good to see you as well. All right, so let's watch, without any further ado, the trailer for the new Top Gun movie. In three, two, one. What do we have here? Yeah, here I thought we were special. Fellas, this here's Bagman. Hangman. Whatever. What the hell kind of mission is this? Everyone here is the best there is. Who the hell are they going to get to teach us? Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell. Let me be perfectly blunt. You are not my first choice. You are here at the request of Admiral Kazansky, AKA Iceman. He seems to think that you have something left to offer the Navy. What that is, I can't imagine. With all due respect, sir, I'm not a teacher. I just want to manage the expectations. What the hell? Good morning, 
aviators. This is your captain speaking. And we're off. Here we go. In three, two, one. We're going into combat on a level no living pilot's ever seen. Not even him. You think up there you're dead? Believe me. My dad believed in you. I'm not gonna make the same mistake. Someone's not coming back from this. Those are your pilots. Anything happens to them. You will never forgive yourself. No turning back now. Come on! Jeez! Having any fun yet? Come on. <laughs> All right, so on the show today, I'm going to show you what's real and what might not be totally real. And let me just start by saying this. It's all real. It's all real. That's exactly what life is like as a fighter pilot. There's no deviation. It's always amazing. It's super cool. Everyone is always the best. And everyone is always super cocky, okay? Uh, and if you believe that, something about an oceanfront property in Arizona... Um, I thought I think it's interesting the difference between life and the movies because the truth is there are some very pressurized poignant moments in the cockpit and there are some press, very pressurized poignant moments in life. What I think is fun when you watch that trailer and then you watch the movie is what it often is not in the movie. So let me tell you how a fighter pilot flight typically goes. All that stuff that you saw flying around the mountains, flying low. We're going to walk through that. I'm going to show you. How, those are real life plane footages, by the way. In the previous movie, uh, uh, the majority of the cockpit scenes and, uh, and, and some of the fight scenes were, were, um, were not real airplanes uh, flying around. Those are real airplanes and Tom Cruise and the actors and actresses are actually sitting in the back of the airplane. So when you see his face mask straining, that's in a real airplane. And I'm going to show you some clips of how they built this movie. It was really great, the fact that they put them in actual Navy aircraft took them off of Navy aircraft carriers and that sort of thing. But the difference between movies and real life goes like this. If I was going to go out on a fighter pilot mission, let's say I was gonna go to do some dogfighting with one of my young students, I'd show up to the brief about three hours early, uh, write all my notes on the whiteboard that I was gonna brief this young student on. About two hours before that, we would go through about an hour brief where I would walk through every single step that we would uh, take during that particular flight. Then we would walk down to maintenance, look at the air airplane, uh, the airplane logs, sign the book, we would go get dressed about 20, 25 minutes before takeoff, go sit in the, do the pre-flight, go sit in the airplane, check all of our systems, start the aircraft about 20 minutes before, taxi out to the runway about 10 minutes before and take off on time. Okay, so what you just heard was about three hours of pretty mundane stuff. Then we would take off. Then we would join up and we would climb out to the working area. That would take about 10 to 15 minutes. We would do another system check. We would do what's called a G check, where you're pulling about four to six Gs, just warming your body up, warming the airplane up, and then you would start fighting. About three and a half hours after you started working on that flight, you'd start flying. Uh, and if they did that in a movie, you would be sitting there for three and a half hours watching some of the best actors in the world do some of the most boring things in the world. And the real difference between movies and life is movies have an editor. I mean, think about it. You've got exciting moments in your life. You've got poignant decision making. You've got high pressure meetings. Some of you are speakers, authors, coaches, consultants. Some of you publish your book. You get up on stage. I mean, there are those moments that are really poignant. But in between all of those moments are the preparation. And you know, I talk a lot about the mental game, about what happens in your mind. It's in those moments that the future result of the pressure moments really happen. It's one thing that I was just thinking about before we got uh, going in into the movie. By the way, if you haven't jumped into the chat, jump in, tell us who you are, where you're from, what you do. What's up, Roy, Gina, Jim? Uh, hey, Phil, good to see you. Uh, your license plate. Oh, yeah. License plate says Deuteronomy 818, one of my favorite verses in the world. Look it up. All right, so back to, uh, back to Top Gun. 
uh, Maverick. So we're going to walk through the trailer, just kind of some poignant spots along the way, uh, and just share with you some, some thoughts that you can take into the movie theater this week. And I'll make some business points here as we go. Um, but um, all right, so here's, here's the beginning of the trailer. You can see actually two F-18s flying right next to each other in formation. Now the formation uh, that they're flying in is the tightest formation that we would fly in. We will typically take off, often we'll land, we'll fly through the clouds in this formation, but you won't see airplanes out in combat in a formation like this. It is a highly defensive formation. So for example, if we're flying in actual formation, we might be a mile, maybe up to three miles away from each other with visual support of each other, but why not right, ne not right next to each other? So my first question for you in chat is why would you not fly that close to each other in combat? Okay, there's actually several reasons, but there's one really big reason, and I'd love to see what your answer is uh, in chat. Why would we not fly that close? Why, why should you not fly that close to each other uh, in, um, in, in real combat? <laughs> That's great. That's a great quote. All right, so I'm gonna continue with the, um, uh, playing this video, okay? Uh, but I would love to see the answer to that question. What do you think? Oh, did you see that? By the way, did you see that? So. Maverick just decided, here we go, watch this, watch this. Two airplanes. Did I miss that whole thing? The miss at the beginning? Here we go. In three, two. See that? Did you see the airplane fly right between those two? I'm gonna make a point on that, but let's see what the answers are. Uh, Roy said, you can, hold on, let me see if, I'll pull this off for a second. Roy said, you both can get hit at once. Jim said a missile takes you both out. Collateral damage. Howard says if one play, yeah, that's the answer. They're all answer right answers, okay? Here's the, the answer is, the answer is, hold on a second. Um, the answer is, as the enemy comes up to look for airplanes, it's, it's possible for them to see one airplane, but not the other one. But if you're flying right next to each other, they're gonna shoot a missile and hit either one of you and the other guy's gonna explode, okay? So like what we like to do, is be mutually supportive so we can see, oh, there's the bad guy, you can come in and shoot, shoot him from behind. Which actually happens quite a bit, okay? Um, Howard, same man, let's see, uh, Bill says twice the target size. John says, it's just stupid. That's another reason for it, okay? So, uh, one place where the where the uh, movie deviates from real life. All right, so let's look at the question. Boom, okay, so take a look at this airplane flying over the desert. This is actually the desert just east of me in California, okay, so the huge flat area uh, right here in El Centro, there's also uh, quite a few valleys up in the Sierra Nevada, Sal Saline Valley, Panamint Valley, uh, Owens Valley, just to name a few that we'll do some low-level training in. Now, most low-level training in an F-18 happens at 500 feet above the ground. Uh, in the most aggressive training I ever did, we were about 100 feet off of the ground. This airplane that you're looking at right here is probably about 50 feet off the ground, uh, maybe even lower. So it's it's lower than the legal legally allowed <laughs> flying in training uh, in training at all. Obviously, the Navy pilots got some uh, waiver and they put a very experienced pilot on here. The way that the pilot is actually staying above the ground is in the cockpit. We have two altimeters. The first altimeter tells you your altitude above sea level. Okay, and the second altitude is a radar altimeter that actually uses a radar to shoot off of the ground and give you a very, very precise measurement of your altitude above the ground. So when a pilot is flying a low altitude mission like this pilot is in this particular trailer, what often happens is they will flip their switch to radar altimeter in the cockpit. It'll show an R and it'll show you your, your elevation above the ground. In this case, probably about 25 feet, maybe 40 feet. Uh, above the ground. And just so you know, when a pilot is flying at that altitude, you have to have 100% of your attention on what we call TCT, train clearing tasks. In other words, they're not looking around the ground on the cockpit, they're not looking to switch the radios. They have 100% of their attention uh, focused on that task. Pilots also have what we call an MCT. You're gonna hear a lot of analogies today. And an MCT is a mission cross-check time. A mission cross-check time is how long you are allowed to deviate your attention from terrain clearance to do something else in the cockpit. Let's say you're looking to switch a missile system, take a look at your radar, 
at an altitude like this, your mission cross check time will be a second or less. Okay. If you're in a turn, sometimes it's even all the way down to zero. In other words, a lot of times your attention has got to be focused 100% on survival with maybe a second to deviate your attention or your energy onto something else. Now, making an interesting business point, isn't that true for you too? Like you have a mission, a purpose, uh, a passion that you have to accomplish in the world and that's your job. But you know what happens a lot of times with entrepreneurs is you get so focused on some other things, checking your email, uh, you know, checking out Facebook or whatever, that you're not focused as much as you need to be on uh, your mission, okay? So just a little business thought. I'm gonna throw a couple of these out there uh, as we go. Uh, your job is to focus on your mission, your purpose, your passion, the thing that you have to do in the world. By the way, for me right now, I've got an event coming up in July and I have a book that I'm launching end of August, probably early September. That's like 100% of my focus. And I shouldn't say 100%, it's probably 80% of my focus because the rest of my focus is on things like checking my email, you know, checking in with uh, team members, making sure that there's projects moving forward. Of course, I have some clients that I'm working for and that sort of thing. So anyway, my point there is I gave you about 80-20. So 80% of your time should be focused on your mission, 20% of your time on other things. My experience with most entrepreneurs is that's flipped. About 20% of your time is focused on what's really important and it would be really nice to flip, flip that. All right, uh, Jim asked, uh, what is TCT? Terrain clearance, ter terrain clearance tasks. Um, good, good stuff. All right, so back to the trailer. What do we have here? Yeah, here I thought we were special. Fellas, this here's Bagman. All right, so what you're looking at right now is the officer's club. Uh, this is where the majority of the drinking happens, uh, frankly. Just so you know, real life pilots might be that cocky inside, but not outside, okay? So, uh, we look, we talk to each other like normal people, okay? So if you know somebody who's got a lot of cockiness, they're not going to talk to you like this. They would have no friends. Okay, so so this is over uh, over dramatized for the movie. People don't talk like this. Hangman. Oh, whatever. What the kind of mission is this? That, by the way, is real life footage from an actual F-18 flying through the valleys. It's interesting when you do these valley flights. Now that's pretty low, also. Uh, that's movie low. But when you're flying, it's interesting when you're flying through valleys, which I've flown through, literally flo flown through canyons before. If you think about it, when you're flying through the canyon like this, straight and level, as you're going through the canyon, you can see both sides go down, right? But when you turn, let's say the canyon turns like this, like say you're flying in the Grand Canyon and the canyon turns like this, the moment you go belly up, what actually happens is you lose complete sight of that side of the canyon. And there have been guys that have been flying like this, go belly up and fly literally into the canyon this way because they can't see it. So here's a second question for you. <laughs> how do you, how, when you're in a nice turn through a turning canyon, how can you make sure you're not gonna hit the other side? All right, what do you think? What do you think, what do you think the answers are? Um, so uh, let's see. Tyra says, thank you for taking the time and energy. This is a lot of fun. Share this with your friends, Charles, What's up, dude? Good to see you again. My call sign was, oh, I'll answer that question, Haley. Thank you for that. I think you know my call sign, head rush. So I'll, I'll, I'll get to that though, that's good. Let me make that as a note. Um, all right, so how do, you keep, how do you keep from hitting the canyon? All right, there's your question. I'll come back to that. Let's watch more of the trailer. Everyone here is the best there is. Who the hell are they? Nobody would ever say that. Nobody would ever say that. <laughs> Nobody would ever say. Everybody here is the best there is. Even when I talk, communicate, I was one of the best, um, I was one of the leading instructors for dog fighting. You'll hear when I talk about my dog fighting, I'll say I was one of the leading instructors. That was a role. That was not me saying I was the best. Some people say, well, you said you were the best. I said, no, I said I was one of the leading instructors. You see even the difference sometimes the way that, uh, that people uh, talk. to teach us. Oh, the music. Come on. Pete Maverick admitted. Here comes the motorcycle. Now, back to the question. Uh, Jim says, fly close to the roof. Use your radar altimeter. Good, okay, good answers. Both those are good answers. Here's how you do it. Um, every canyon, or at least most canyons, have a river going through the bottom of it. It's just the nature of canyons. And canyons that don't have a river have a dry river, okay? Uh, just the way canyons are. So, if you're turning hard inside of a canyon, if you look down, and you're right over the river, you're not gonna hit the canyon wall because canyon walls don't exist at the same place as the river. 
Okay, so sometimes you'll turn, you'll see the river start to disappear. That's time to level your wings and make sure you're not about to run into something. All right, good, good answers, good answers, really good answers. Here comes the motorcycle. Let me be perfectly blunt. You are not my first choice. You are here at the request of Admiral Kazansky, AKA Iceman. He seems to think that you have something left to offer the Navy. What that is, I can't imagine. Okay, take a look at Maverick's face. This is a real life flying scene. The biggest difference in this movie is they put the actors and actresses right in the airplane. I'm gonna show you a little video of them uh, doing that. that those um, atmospherics, that vapor coming off the wings often happens in an F-18 when you pull really hard and your lower altitude and the humidity is higher. Okay, essentially what that is, is you're changing the dew point and the pressure of the air that goes over the wings and you're actually just forming clouds. Kind of interesting. With all due respect, sir, I'm not a teacher. Just want to manage the expectations. Okay, pause. Let's talk about Maverick. So, topic, the original Top Gun was put out in 1986. Uh, to be a lieutenant in the Navy, you would have to, had, had to have been in the Navy for at least four years. That puts Maverick at a minimum of 26 years old because to be a Navy pilot, you need to have a college degree. Okay, so let's assume Maverick in 1986 is 26 years old. Uh, 1986 was based on my uh, best math 36 years ago. So go 36 times 20, or 36 plus 26 is 62, okay? So to put a little reality into this one, uh, Maverick in this movie is still a lieutenant at age 62. Pretty much mandatory to retire out of the military by 55. Uh, you, you, if you're admiral or a general, you can push that a little bit, but uh, there are minimums that you can remain at a certain rank before they flat out make you retire, okay? So uh, I know it's, it's, it makes for a great story, and I know Tom Cruise looks really young for how old he is. I have no idea. That said, um, this is one of the farthest stretches of the movie, but good on him for bringing it back, all right? Still kind of fun. What the hell? That move, by the way, would be completely legal. You would get kicked completely out of the service for doing that. When we do uh, training dog fights, we have an imaginary 500 foot bubble around each airplane. Going through the airplanes like that uh, would be the immediate, immediate dismissal from the service. Makes for a good movie though. Good morning, aviators. Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. And we're off. Here we go. In three, two, one. Okay, that was a real life uh, carrier launch as well. You'll see in a moment that they do that. A little bit about the gear real quick before we keep rocking and rolling. You guys having fun? If you are, say hoorah for me in chat, will you? Um, so a um, little bit about the gear. So I, brought, I just brought my own helmet and uh, my own oxygen mask to the show today. So this is the oxygen mask that I use in training. Uh, literally just straps onto your face just like that. It's got a communication device uh, sitting right in the middle. So that's where the little radio is. The rest of the radio is in your ears, as you might uh, imagine. Uh, this helmet right here, uh, pretty good sound protection. I just dropped the visor uh, onto the ground, but this was the marine version of the helmet with the camouflage. You can see my call sign on the back, which was, uh, which was head. Interestingly, in the original movie, you saw the pilots uh, dangling their oxygen masks sort of around. We would do that from time to time during the breaks in between engagements, just to get a drink and just to relax for a little bit. You would never do that in combat. And so I thought it was interesting in this particular movie, uh, the pilots actually have their masks on and you can see how realistic it is because Tom Cruise is, is actually crooked in, in a couple of the scenes. There's a reason for that. I'm gonna show you why your mask gets crooked in a little bit, but it has to do with the fact that you're pulling a lot of G's, okay? Uh, so uh, so, <laughs> so here, I'll kick it back into the, the thing, but thank you, Phil. Thank you, Howard. Jim says this is all so cool. All right, let's rock. We're going into combat on a level no living pilot's ever seen. Not even him. I'm not buying that no living pilot's ever seen thing. Look, we had folks in World War II who shot down, you know, 20 some airplanes. We had folks in Vietnam that shot down more than five airplanes. In fact, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the Navy's aces is right here, lives here right here in San Diego, former uh, congressman. Okay, uh, so um, whatever combat is in this movie, I, I bet you it doesn't exceed the days in WW2 when pilots would take off, 
shoot two planes down, get shot down, parachute out, take a truck back to the airfield, take off again and go fly later on that afternoon. That was when pilots were, uh, I don't know how to say it other than just to say pretty badass, all right? You think up there you're dead, believe me. That's not true. That's not true, by the way. If you think up there, you'll probably stay alive. If you don't think up there, you'll die, okay? <laughs> so that's the opposite, just so you know. Now, there is something to be said for what are called stick and rudder skills uh, or just being able to react well, but that's thinking. That's all thinking. See that guy go under the bridge? I, was, I, asked a, I asked a pilot, when I was a brand new pilot, I asked, I said, uh, uh, I said, can you fly under, we were, I was here in San Diego. I said, hey, could you ever fly under the Coronado Bridge? The Coronado Bridge goes right across San Diego, right into Coronado. I said, hey, could you ever fly under the Coronado Bridge? And the answer that the senior pilot gave to me was, yeah, you can do anything you want once. <laughs> what, and, the, and the point he was making was, yeah, you'll do it once, you'll get kicked out of the, uh, out of the service. So that, that wouldn't happen either. In fact, I doubt that that happened in real life, just so you know. I believed in you. I'm not gonna make the same mistake. Someone's not coming back from this. Those are your pilots. Anything happens to them. Smoke in the air! Smoke in the air! All right, some people getting shot down, some people dying. Pretty standard for the movie. You saw those missiles actually shooting from the top of a mountain. Uh, maybe the worst place to put a missile system. Uh, first of all, you have to get a missile system up to the top of the mountain. Second, it's really easy to see it on the top of the mountain. Most missile systems are in concealed places. Like for example, a lot of the North Korean missile systems are built into mountains and that sort of thing. So um, not exactly where you would see a, a missile system, but back to the movie. You will never forgive yourself. No turning back now. Yet. <laughs> That's real, by the way. That is a. Re I love that footage. Okay, so you see this. See this shot of Maverick coming up over the mountain, flipping back upside down, and coming back down. That is how we would often do low levels. Come screaming up to the mountaintop, pull directly up, pull over, look like this, literally. Uh, out of the top of the cockpit, right on top of the mountain, and then pulled down. That is as legitimate of a shot as it gets, and I really like the, how, the, how they did that. You can actually see, from the look on Maverick's face, you can actually see him straining pretty significantly under the G, and you'll notice this in just a little bit when I get to the next, uh, next clip. Uh, his face is all contorted. I love it. All right, who's got tickets to go? Paul says, why does it bump a little bit when you lift off the carrier? Are you not? Yeah, because the wheels just leave the deck <laughs> completely. <laughs> also, the launch mechanism lets go uh, as well. Haley, who knows my stories? All right, so um, good stuff. All right, so jump into chat. If you haven't already done so, tell us who you are, where you're from, uh, what you do, um, and... Um, Yes, an F-18 is at risk from a shoulder-fired SAM if you're low enough. So, for example, in Iraq, we were flying around at 14,000, 16,000 feet. Not really at risk up there, but, uh, but definitely a lot lower. All right, so for those of you who just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. Today, we are talking about, we're breaking down the new Top Gun movie. Just kind of going through the trailer, having a little bit of fun, talking about what's actually in the airplane. This is Top Gun week, by the way. Uh, so tomorrow at 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 Eastern, uh, 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 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 Eastern, I'm actually going to go back to the old Top Gun movie. I'm going to break that down too. We'll talk about how fighter pilots did training. Uh, and all this week, by the way, all the way until Thursday when the movie comes out, I got my tickets, 10 tickets, baby. I'm um, going to Cineopolis, sitting in the luxury cinema, maybe have a little burger, maybe have a beer, uh, watch the Top Gun movie. Uh, all week, by the way, all week. Uh, at Top Gun Week, what I did is, so, so some of you know I have an event coming up uh, this July, July 8th and 9th. It's in Bend, Oregon. It's called God Talks Live. It's a, an event where you learn how to ask God questions about your business and get answers. 
literally had thousands of people go through this process from all walks of life and had experience and massive breakthrough. Uh, and so if you're looking for more certainty and more passion in your business, this is the way to go. And by the way, you don't have to have a specific religious background uh, to show up at this event. This event is for you. If you know that God created you to do something amazing and you haven't quite done it yet. All right, so all week what I'm doing uh, is I'm not only giving $200 off, but I'm also giving uh, you a chance to bring a guest or a spouse or a business partner uh, or a significant other for free. Uh, so when you go to the website, uh, which is edrush.com slash God talks, uh, you'll learn about more about the event. Okay, so let me just show you really quickly. Um, I'll show you a little bit more about the event and then I'm going to show you where to put that um, coupon code in uh, so that you can get a, um, hang on, let's see if I can get this to pull up. Uh, hold on. I, I think I got to, I have to pull up a different, uh, a different browser. Well, here's the deal. So the website is God Talks Live and the coupon code is special. So just write that down. It's edrush.com slash God Talks. It's edrush. I'll just leave it under there for a second. edrush.com slash God Talks. The coupon code is special. That gets you $200 off. It's a $497 event. It changes that to $297. And you get to bring a guest for free. What that means is you're getting $1,000 worth of tickets for $300, which is like 70% off. All right. So I'll leave this below for just a second while you put your questions into chat. If you haven't ever already joined us, tell us who you are, where, where you're from, uh, what, you, what you do. Jim said, love the last God Talks event in Dallas. It was awesome. And if you've been to my events before, make sure you jump into chat and say, hey, it's a little bit of a, a different kind of event, um, but uh, unbelievable. And the stuff that we talk about business is directly applicable to you right now. And you're going to learn what's changed in the last two years in the business world, the difference between 2022 and 2020 or 2019, it might as well be 80 years instead of three years, okay? Paul says, God Talks is a great program. Enjoyed it in Dallas with Jim House dialed in the God line. Again, whatever you believe, you're, you're welcome to bring that. The event is in Bend, Oregon and streaming online, okay? So you have two options. You can either watch it online on Zoom. Uh, you can come live. Just go check out the website. You'll learn more about the event. And for those of you who just joined us, we're here talking about the new Top Gun movie. And like I said, since it's Top Gun week, you get a really special deal uh, on the event. And I think, let's see, yeah, that two for one deal expires on um, Thursday night. All right. So not to say I won't bring it back because sometimes I do, but I might not. Um, I got a big, 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 massive, massive promoter coming in next week. We'll put another 100, 150 people into the event. It's going to be big. It's going to be awesome. All right, come to this event because when my book comes out in August, September, it'll be 4,000 people at the next event. All right, so come to this one so we can hang out a little bit. And by the way, if you've never been to Bend, Oregon, uh, and especially not to Bend, Oregon in uh, the summer, it is an unbelievable place to be. All right, so let's get back to talking about Top Gun. I want to show a little behind the scenes on how they made this movie. Kind of fun. It's kind of a fun um, background on how they did this, how they trained the actors to get into the airplane and how to actually act in a fighter aircraft. It's pretty, pretty cool. You're going to see how they went through a little swim training. Okay, so I'm going to show you this uh, whole little clip and then I'll just kind of break it down like I did with the last one. We are cleared into the area. Verify cameras are on. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Here comes some G's. There's five G's. Seven G's. All right. That was awesome. I wasn't ready to make a sequel until we had a special story worthy of a sequel. And until technology evolved so we could delve deeper into the experience of a fighter pilot. The first movie became something that changed a generation. So this is exciting to come back and get in those jets again. We worked with the Navy and the Top Gun School to formulate how to shoot it practically. Because if we're going to do it, we're going to fly in the F-18s. The aviation sequences had to be real. So our actors went through three months of grueling training. The Navy says if you eject, you have to be able to survive in the water. So we had to go through that challenging underwater program. 
It's intense. You're flipped inverted and you're having to try and get out. From there, Tom designed this all-encompassing aviation training for all the actors. I started them out in a single-engine airplane to build up their spatial awareness inside the aircraft. Oh, wow. That's amazing! Oh, my God! Next, we took them to the L-39. And they went and flew aerobatics to feel what it's like in a jet. It's so speed. Wow. From there, they'd graduate to the F-18 Super Hornet and actually launching off an aircraft carrier. That's our truck is back. <laughs> the actors also had to learn how to run the cameras because when they're up in the jet, they have to direct themselves, essentially. Okay, I'm rolling. I had to really teach them cinematography and the lighting so that they understood what's gonna look good on camera. Sun angle's great. Everybody thought it would be impossible for actors to really be in the jets. But that's the gift that Tom gave us, that by the time we got up there, we could handle it. Definitely the most amazing thing I've ever done. All the training, 100% prepared us. I'm very proud of what we all accomplished. Each one of them are extraordinary. It still blows my mind that we've done this. There's nothing like it. Pretty cool, right? I thought that was actually the coolest part of the whole movie. Now, uh, I just want to give credit where credit is due. There's, I just had this comment from this person uh, who said, Hey, Ed, who is the first person that showed you this clip with a smiley face? Now, you'll notice that the person who made this comment, her name is Faith Rush, my amazing 17-year-old who's upstairs. She probably should be doing school right now. Uh, but instead, she's watching Ed Talks Live, which is basically like school, but better. Um, uh, and you'll see the little picture. She's holding on to one of our little chicks that's recently turned into a chicken. Um, so uh, I love you, Faith. Thank you for watching the show. <laughs> so everybody in chat, say hello to the amazing Faith Rush. Uh, Haley, my man Haley, uh, said that's awesome how they train the actors. I thought it was really cool how they did that. I'm going to show you a couple things as far as the training goes. But let me just, let me just say it this way. Getting into an F-18, especially in the back seat, the first time is no joke, okay? Um, let, me, let me give you an example. So I recently, about a year ago, went and raced cars in Atlanta. I was, I was racing a 911 um, Porsche. Got up to, you know, 150, 160, cornering, you know, sometimes at like 80, 90 miles an hour. Pretty, fa pretty fast. Um, and in the car, I felt fine. Reaction time, all that stuff, body, everything kind of felt pretty good. Then I got into the, next, the seat uh, next to the driver. And the guy that I was work, working with drove while I was sitting in the seat next to him. And as much as I've flown airplanes and as much as my equilibrium is trained for massive maneuvering like that, sitting in the airplane, uh, or excuse me, sitting in the car was really hard. It was really hard. When you're in control of the vehicle, it's pretty easy actually. But when you're sitting, sitting there, stopping, accelerating, turning, you know, around the corners, is really hard on your body. So getting into the back seat of an F-18, period, is a hard thing to do, even if you're a trained pilot, even if you're skilled at it. Uh, that, but being back there and trying to act, that's pretty legit, okay? So I'm giving the actors a lot of credit where I wouldn't normally give the actors a lot of credit. And I think it was very smart how they worked them up from a single engine airplane to an L-39, which is basically a jet aircraft. The reason why, by the way, they went single engine L-39 other than to train the actors, is L-39s are privately owned, so they could essentially, on a much lower budget, getting into an F-18 takes a massive, as you might imagine, a massive footprint uh, at taxpayer. A lot of that is, I would imagine, at taxpayer expense, okay, or whatever they had to pay for it was quite a little bit. All right, so um, now, the training, though, I thought it was interesting. I'm going to show you a part of this clip that was that uh, that I thought was super cool that they went through their uh, their um, their um, uh, ground training. I'm gonna show you this part where they're actually in the pool. Check this out. Actors went through three months of grueling training. Okay, first of all, I don't actually think they made them like do push-ups out on the flight line. That grueling training bit, that might have been like, you know, 
let's just assume that they came in good shape. <laughs> okay, <laughs> they, I never had to do I never had to do push-ups on the flight line. Let me just put it that way. Now, what you're going to see is the under uh, the water survival training, which every Navy pilot, every Marine pilot, you have to go through. Period. Dot. Have to. Must to. Actually, have to go through. And you have to get recertified every four years. And this going underwater, upside down, no joke. I'm going to tell you how they used to do this with us. It's a little the Navy cool. says if you eject, you have to be able to survive in the water. So we had to go through a challenging underwater program. It's intense. You're flipped, inverted, and you're having to try and get out. All right. So let me show you. Let me show you this. I'm gonna stop right at this clip right here. See, you see, you can see Maverick or Tom Cruise um, going down inside this vehicle. So there's two scenarios uh, that you do four times, and I'll explain the scenarios that you do in order to pass this part of your egress training. Okay, what they're trying to train you to do is to get out of a of a of a aircraft that has gone into the water. And one scenario is, is a fixed wing airplane like an F-18. Another scenario, the one you're looking at right now is actually a scenario like a helicopter has gone underwater. So here's what you do. The first, first one is you're sitting in the cockpit or a simulated cockpit. You hit the water. So you're in this cockpit, like above the water, and they rotate this entire thing so that you actually go into the water. Let me show you uh, I think there's part of this clip where they actually take that's this this is the single engine version. Okay? So you can see this thing. Let me let me just show you the actual clip. And the I'll, Navy says if you eject, you have Okay. See how that goes rotates underwater. Now, what they teach you in the Navy water training is that you typically don't want to get out while the thing's still moving. You wait till it settles down a little bit, then you unbuckle. So what that means is you're sitting there these Navy divers turn you upside down and you literally go all the way upside down before you're allowed to unbuckle. And then when you unbuckle, you swim to the top. Then they put you in the helicopter trainer and they put you, they hit the water. It turns upside down with you in it. It fills completely with water. Then you unbuckle and then you get out. That's what you're seeing these actors do. Okay, so this clip I'm showing you. To be able to survive in the water. Upside down, so go through get out of the water. Underwater. See that? The water's starting to fill up. It will go upside down. It's intense. You're then you have to find the exit and get out. Okay. Now, the next lift inverted, and you're having a try. <laughs> the next, the next stage, which they don't show these actors doing. Okay. The next stage of this, <laughs> they blindfold you. Okay. So they have swim goggles that they give you, and these swim goggles have been painted black on the inside. So you put the swim goggles on. You, you can't even see any light, okay? It's completely dark. And the idea here is what happens if you lose your airplane in the water and it's nighttime, okay? So now check it out. Now they flip you upside down, you can't see. And you have to unbuckle and somehow swim up to the surface, all right? Then they put you in this helicopter, the fake helicopter, and you hit the water, they turn you upside down, you go all the way upside down, and you have to unbuckle and find your way out of a door or a window blindfolded. Now keep in mind, in the helicopter scenario, there's about five other pilots in this train in training inside this helicopter with you, which means you're getting kicked in the face, you're getting kicked in the nose. <laughs> They're like beating each other up on the way out because you don't know where the other people are either. When it's light, you're like, let that person go and then you go and then the next person goes. But when you're upside down in the thing, that's like real training, okay? They actually do that in real training. So I thought it was really cool that they made those actors go through that part of the training uh, and then get used to flying in the, in the airplane. All right, so uh, one more thing on this clip and then I'm just gonna do some Q&A uh, and answer your questions and have a little bit of fun. Get out. One more thing on this uh, clip that I'm showing here. I wanna show this little part where they're pulling some Gs. I think that shows up, watch this by the way. This is crazy, watch the look on his face. A carrier launch is unbelievable. The amount of acceleration. L take a look at the look on his face as he goes off. An aircraft carrier. <laughs> I think it's got to be really hard to act in front of a camera, camera on, the, on a move like that. Okay, so there's, um, there's, hold on, there's some like, here, let's see where he goes over that cliff and pulls. There it is. So I think there's a spot right in here. There, here, watch the look on their faces, okay? I wanna show you these, this, this G, these G maneuvers. Okay, so to explain G-forces, one G is where we're sitting right now. It's essentially 
the weight of the Earth's gravity at sea level. So you're sitting in your chair, you're sitting in your car, you're working out, right now you're at 1G. If you increase, so for example, like if you're on a roller coaster, you come around the back side of the loop on the Incredicoaster, that's like two, maybe two and a half Gs. You actually feel the Incredicoaster start to turn, you get kind of pushed into your seat, you can kind of feel your face move down, that's probably two to two and a half Gs. In other words, if this, there was a scale underneath you and you weigh 150 pounds, the scale would trick, go all the way up to about 300 pounds and then go back to 150 when you hit 1G. Does that make sense? So you're essentially twice your weight, really, uh, when you're underneath 2Gs. Now you hear the trainer pilots go, that's 3Gs, that's 4Gs, that's 5Gs. The F-18 goes up to about 8Gs, okay? And that's about where the max is before the plane starts to break. That's seven to eight times your body weight. What happens is everything that can move will. So your bones kind of stay put. But the rest of your body, which is made of like skin and liquid and stuff, starts to move. You can see their faces like start to contort as the weight just starts to pull and their oxygen mask starts to pull off of their face. Remember I told you I was going to tell you why Maverick's mask got all crooked? The weight starts to pull your face and everything down. But what's even more important is you have this entire liquid system moving through your body called blood. And when you pull a massive amount of G, the blood wants to go down by just the natural force of extra gravity. What that means is the blood wants to move out of your head and move down to your legs, frankly. As you can imagine, that might be an issue because you need blood in your head so that you can think. Now your body has a fail-safe mechanism. It lasts for about one and a half seconds. So if you don't have blood in your brain, it will actually continue working for about a second and a half and then it'll shut completely off. And what you'll see in training, we do these G uh, simulators. You'll see in training as you're fighting under the G, you'll see guys holding it, holding it, holding it, and then all of a sudden they'll just pass out. Like literally just pass out. In the cockpit, if you're pulling that much G and you pass out, the airplane just starts flying straight. And it'll take five or 10 seconds before the reboot procedure brings you back uh, back to life. Okay, so check it out. Watch these, watch their faces under G. One. Here comes some G's. There's five G's. Oh. <laughs> See the mask? See the mask in his face starting to pull. I love that. I love this. I love this. Oh, okay, watch. <laughs> That's not easy. I'm just telling you. It doesn't matter who you are. That's not easy. Look at the look on her face. Look at her. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is real. This is real G. Okay. This is real G force. All right. Come on. Oh man. I don't know why I think this is so funny. Look at his face. Seriously. That's a real face of a real person experiencing a lot of G. There's Maverick. I don't know why I think that's so funny, but that's that's real. So these real clips of them actually flying, uh, it really in the airplane. I thought that was so cool that they actually put them out there, just to show them um, a little bit about how this works. Now, I'll tell you one more story, and then I'll answer your questions, uh, and then we'll wrap it up. So we had every once in a while we would fly in the cockpit. Uh, we would fly ground marines, folks who are infantry or artillery or tanks just to show them what it looks like up in the air because we're up there supporting them, right? So one day we had this, uh, this ground commander, I think he was like a lieutenant colonel, and you know you know how in the movie uh, the, the pilots are super cocky, but in, uh, in real life I said, you know, we're pretty much regular people, like maybe cocky but not out loud. Well this guy showed up, this ground guy showed up, and he was cocky. And there's this sort of sense in the Marine Corps that the ground, folks on the ground are superior to the people in the air because you know they work, they really work uh, harder or something. Uh, and so this guy shows up and with a chip on his shoulder and said, yeah, I'm going to find out today what you guys really do. Probably sip coffee up at 15,000 feet. And this guy goes out on a mission. It was an air to ground, close air support mission. Dude starts throwing up at about 20 minutes into the flight. Um, my friend who was the pilot uh, took the airplane to the tanker and refueled. And this guy lost his mind because he realized he was only halfway through a flight that he thought it was going to end. By the time they landed about two and a half hours later, this lieutenant colonel got out of the airplane and literally laid on the runway for about a half an hour before he could be helped to his feet. 
and actually make his way back upstairs. And he walks into the ready room. We're all sitting there just hanging out. Uh, and he walks into the ready room and he looks at us and he goes, guys, I am so sorry. I had no idea. I had no idea. And I thought that was just a fun way for him to, to repent <laughs> to repent, <laughs> to be repent. Oh my gosh, I love this. I love this. This is my friend George Tolls, by the way. I've no, I've known George, by the way, since I was like four. So <laughs> one of the most amazing men in the entire world. And George says, can you choose to be sprinkled in the pool instead of immersed? If you're a Presbyterian. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's like a whole inside joke there, but but yeah, no, you gotta get dunked and go immersed into the pool. What's up, Nona from SoCal? Nona works at a bourbon company, so work meetings over at the bourbon company must be a blast. Howard said, I thought they had or used pressure suits that would keep the G-force reduced. 100%. So, gosh, I wish I had that sitting here. So we have a pair of pants that we put on that are that is called a G-suit. And that G-suit, the more G you pull, fills up with air. It actually pushes, it actually pushes uh, the blood back up and the G Howard is good for uh, helping you uh, for about an extra one to two G's. So maybe if you're feeling eight G's, it feels more like six on the blood system, but still quite a lot of G. All right. Um, Paul says, do the air brakes really work? And would you utilize that maneuver in a dogfight? Maybe that not like that though. Like that's a pretty extreme how that airplane uh, did that. It would look it, would, it wouldn't look so much like this. It would look more like this. Because as you pull the nose up, the airplane's going to go up and it would pull back. Uh, and you might do that in a certain scenario uh, if on a really slow speed kind of dogfight, but not in a high speed dogfight. Bourbon meetings are definitely a blast. I love it. My man DJ! DJ is in the house. Dude, it's been forever since I talked to you, man. So DJ is a long, long time friend. We actually met uh, as he was a student at Embry. Uh, as a pilot, and um, DJ is writing a fiction book uh, that I won't give away any of it. I'll just tell you it's awesome. So, hey, what's up? Hello from Morocco. Good to see you as well. Thanks for joining. All right, so what I'm going to do is just answer any of your questions for the rest of today. we got about five minutes left in the show, uh, and then we'll wrap it up. By the way, for those of you who haven't taken advantage of this, um, I've got a crazy good deal happening this week. Um, for the next event. If you haven't been to my events before, it'll blow your mind, okay? The website is at the bottom, edrush.com slash God Talks. When you get there, use coupon code SPECIAL that's gonna give you $200 off, plus you can bring a guest for free. A lot of times people like to bring a spouse, a business partner, because when you come back from the event, you're gonna wanna have an accountability partner, maybe somebody like, like you know, help you uh, really accomplish what you've been wanting to accomplish. Uh, so do that. I'll leave this underneath here for just a little bit just to show you where that link is. Uh, and that lasts until Thursday, okay? So it's a great deal. It's going to be an amazing event. It's up in Bend, Oregon. You can come and watch online or you can attend live. By the way, if you're on the fence on those two, attend live. There's a special evening session on the first night that's for the live event attendees only. Um, I'm calling it my League of Extraordinary um, Women. I've got uh, three women speakers that will blow your mind. One of them runs these huge retreats over in Australia. She's coming over to speak. Another one is my go-to person when it comes to health and fitness. Uh, and the other one is Marquetta Breslin, who most of you know, uh, who is unbelievable, one of the best entrepreneurs that I know on planet Earth. All right, three books, come on. Um, all right, see you, Howard. Good to see you. Thanks for joining me on the show today. All right, so I'm gonna take your questions. I think, what was one of the questions that I wrote down? My call sign, Haley asked my call sign. So I showed you my helmet. My call sign was head rush, as in, Head rush. Uh, they always say you can only break, the best you can do is break even with a call sign. Uh, and I certainly did that, broke even with my call sign. So head rush was my call sign. Anybody else have any other questions? Jump in. Uh, just a reminder, this week is Top Gun week. So tomorrow, tomorrow, I'm actually going to go back to the old Top Gun movie. We're going to break down the old Top Gun movie, then we're going to jump back into the new Top Gun movie. I'm going to be taking more of your questions tomorrow. So be sure to make it tomorrow. I'll send you an email if you're on my email list. If you're not, you better get on my email list. It's edrush.com. Boom, there it is. And there's like free stuff there too. Okay, but if you haven't had the opportunity to it to register for God Talks Live, make sure that you go do that as soon as you can. Any other questions? Any other comments? Any other thoughts? 
I'm going to wrap up the show today. But before I do that, oh, Paul, boom, right at the last minute. Paul says, is it possible to eject from a flat, flat spin? Mm-hmm. But possible to eject from almost anything. The airplanes now have what are called zero, zero seats. That means zero altitude, zero airspeed. What that basically means is you can be sitting on the runway, not moving at all, and eject and safely open your canopy of your parachute to be able to land. In fact, the seats are so advanced now that you could actually be inverted. Because I was inverted, you could actually be upside down at maybe 100, 150 feet, and the seat will actually shoot out and up, and then you'll be able to parachute down. So, good stuff. Love you, Haley. Let's talk soon, man. Uh, hope you get, hope, hopefully you guys are awesome. All right, so without any further ado, don't forget it's Top Gun week. I'm going to the movie on Thursday. Maybe we'll do a show after that <laughs> to connect on how it was. Uh, but up until then, never forget that I love you and I like you. Uh, and it's going to be an awesome week. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to stick around and chat for just a minute or two and just say hey. Uh, but I will see you tomorrow uh, at 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern. We're going to talk about the old Top Gun movie. That's all for now. Ed Talks Live is out. <laughs>